All right. I have broken things down into five basic organ segments. I know there are a lot of them. I, I told you three years I've been working on this. Okay, but I also uh, put some icons in so that you can see some basic facts about every case. So 37 of the 50 cases we will look at have our motor vehicle collisions, and that will be designated with that uh, green triangle. The other causes, well, we have the typical uh, guns and knives. Actually, that's not a knife, it's a screwdriver. Uh, we have a soccer mishap, and then we've got a bull, a horse, a doctor, and a woman. So those are the potential uh, the sources of these traumas. I also went to the National Center for Biometric Information and pulled the expected mortalities for every one of these injuries. So you'll see that with each one. And then uh, whether or not the patient lived is certainly an item of interest. So a deceased patient will be designated with that ghoulish skull icon. And then whether the radiologist actually made the call or not, did they see the finding? That'll be a, a red X if the radiologist missed the finding like Miss Othmar used to put on your grade school tests. So what this ends up is we have iconized all these things for every one of these uh, entities, and you'll see those at the bottom of the screen. So if you ever think, hey, did this guy make it? You just look to the bottom and you'll be able to see the icon. Okay, this one is a real doozy. This was actually a medical malpractice case, uh, but it was not within the time frame of the analysis I did for tomorrow's lecture, so I get to use it in my trauma lecture. You can see the hypodense laceration in the top portion of the spleen here. This was missed. And it's uh, it's definitely there, but it's pretty subtle on this cut. And when you look lower, it looks like there is some extravasation there, but it's all contained within the substance of the splenic parenchyma. And in fact, there's no perisplenic fluid. So that's the portion right there that should have been spotted. And certainly you could see that other variegated uh, density within the spleen. But again, no perisplenic fluid. And you know there is, of course, the Moray effect, although you know, this is a little bit late for that in terms of contrast uh, timing. But look at this follow-up. This is the delayed, okay? This is the same exam, but this is the delayed image. You can just barely appreciate that hypodensity on the superior anterior aspect of the spleen. Look lower down where we saw all that contrast before. There is nothing. It's almost perfectly homogeneous. All right, so look at it on the cine. So there's a subtle hypodensity there, but look at the rest of the spleen. It looks absolutely normal. And again, no perisplenic fluid at all. So our radiologist did not call this a laceration, and this patient ultimately died. Uh, she, it, this was a Texas case. She had run into a horse on the road. That was the MVA that led to this. Uh, this was called normal. They watched her for a few hours, uh, let her go home, and then uh, she returned basically hypotensive and uh, pulseless. So the bizarre thing about this, and we'll talk more about this tomorrow on the med mound thing, they really put a lot of emphasis on the social value of a patient. That's how they determine, you know, how much would they have earned, uh, how much uh, loss of consortium is there for her family members and all of these sorts of things. The deposition and reports of counsel on this one read, every member of this woman's family is a criminal. And they actually, the settlement on this was $20,000. Unbelievable. All right. Uh, this is one of my favorite cases of all time. A very difficult case, but one that makes all kinds of great anatomic points. So this is a pancreatic laceration. You can see there is a linear defect right there through the body of the pancreas, even the junction of the body and tail. Right? And there is peripancreatic fluid, but we're going to look closer at that. Lower down, still peripancreatic fluid, but there's a little different fluid collection right there. 
And it looks like they're the same on the higher cut, but I think here you can actually appreciate they are not in the same anatomic compartment, right? And ultimately what this was, was a combined pancreatic and aortic laceration. That aorta is lacerated. And you could tell this by virtue of these fluid collections and their appearance, okay? So the yellow arrow is pointing to what is truly peripancreatic fluid. That is the result of the pancreatic laceration. And you can see that's respecting the anterior perirenal fascia, right? But behind it, the red arrow, that is a more circumscribed, slightly more hyperdense collection of fluid. And that is in the perinephric space, right? The perinephric space is the larger space that encompasses both kidneys and the aorta and IVC. And within that, you have right and left perinephric fascia. So you can actually see that fluid collection, the one with the red arrows, is originating from the torn aorta, and it's in the vascular portion of the perinephric space, but it is respecting the left perinephric fascia. Right? So it's just in the central portion of the perinephric space. And I think on this mag view, you can really appreciate right, that those fluid collections are different in density and different in anatomic location. So that is a tough, tough call, but this patient died of an aortic laceration that went undiagnosed. We got the pancreatic laceration, but did not call the aortic one. So here's the cine on that. There's the pancreatic laceration. There's the peripancreatic fluid. But then when we go back through it, you'll see the hyperdense periaortic fluid. It's actually in the perinephric space. Great anatomy lesson there. All right. This is an AV fistula. This actually was an interesting story that this, uh, this patient was a bouncer at a nightclub and he evicted someone apparently in a less than gentle fashion. And the guy was so angry, he went home and got his gun and came back and shot the bouncer. Uh, so you can see there's obviously a metallic density there. And right here, going from the right common iliac artery, it's probably running into a little torn branch vessel that is feeding the right common iliac vein. And the thing that really calls your attention to this is the asymmetry of the external iliac vein and the asymmetry of its contrast enhancement. That's actually retrograde down the right external iliac vein from the point of the fistula, right? And you can see that right external iliac vein is much, much larger than the opposite side. And on the opposite side, the external iliac vein does not have contrast in it. And so here's the cine and it's right there that you can see it leaving the iliac artery and entering the iliac vein. And then you can follow that down the pelvis and see the asymmetric size and enhancement of that vessel. So that's an AV fistula. I used to think that AV fistulas were more common with gunshots. I'm starting to kind of wonder, maybe not, but uh, that tumbling, all that uh, kinetic energy from these gunshots, it has a tendency, I think, to shear off vessels that sit next to each other, right? And get them both at once. And so that's obviously how you ultimately develop these fistulae. Okay, here is our last one. It is incredible. <laughs> All right, this, they tell me, the ER doctor said, he literally was just standing there. He, this is a guy who really was just standing on the corner. He was shot accidentally in some kind of drive-by altercation. The bullet probably ricocheted upwards because it comes in at a really high angle. The only external 
that soft tissue thing you can see is this little dot of gas here kind of above the right groin. Here, higher up in the abdomen, you can see a few things. For one, there's a defect in the IVC, and that is extra caval contrast. So this is a caval laceration. But look behind it, there's a defect in the right renal artery. So this gets even more complex because this patient only has one kidney. In fact, he has, a, oh, so let's appreciate that. You can see again the defect in the IVC, the contrast beyond it, and a gap, a defect in the right renal artery. You know, when we go lower down, you can actually see little microembolic phenomena in the cortex of the right kidney, suggesting there isn't a suggesting there is an upstream vascular injury, right? And as we go a little lower, you can see this patient actually has an accessory renal artery that's located inferiorly, fairly common in patients that have congenital absence of one kidney. So when we look at the delayed images, you can see that the lower and more medial portion of the kidney that is supplied by the accessory renal artery, which is uninjured, is normal. But the upper lateral portion of that kidney supplied by the injured main renal artery is obviously hypoperfused. And there is the culprit sitting in the apex of the right ventricle. So what happened was the bullet went in the groin at a steep angle. It penetrated the anterior wall of the IVC, smacked against the posterior wall of the IVC, dissecting the right renal artery, right, and giving you microembolic phenomena and hypoperfusion of the right kidney. But it did not penetrate the posterior wall of the IVC, and instead continued traveling up into the right ventricle. That is insane. Uh, they actually saved this. They, uh, they did not operate on the IVC, but they went in and did a, uh, an interventional procedure to reopen the uh, right renal artery. And so this actually turned out fairly well. And there is that bullet in the right ventricle. Oh, they left it. They'll always leave those. <laughs> it probably just endothelialized and uh, still there today. 